what is a metaverse? You wake up in the morning, you of course get to Facebook and YouTube, your visual and audio senses are already fine-tuned to that, you are mentally somewhere else. Now imagine, instead of watching the video, let's say, of a concert, you would actually be on that concert. Suddenly you're in the concert arena, you can feel the people, see the people, even touch them, you can feel the music, your heart uh, plays with the rhythm of the music, you feel the smells around even, maybe you can bring your friends, well, at least their avatars around, you can gather with them, whisper something to their ear, and then suddenly, with the blink of an eye, literally, you just move back to the office because you have a meeting, you're fully dressed for the meeting, your colleagues are sitting around, you can feel them, you can smell the environment, maybe the coffee, you can touch the papers. You start the meeting, after you finish, you decide with all of them to just move for, say, skiing. So what you do? You literally draw the mountain around you, full of snow, shift there in full skiing dress. You can feel the slope, maybe you can even feel the cold, you can touch your friends and get a full feeling of skiing in that completely imagined world. The fact is, you're not there. You're sitting back in your chair. Your colleagues are as well sitting back in their chairs. Everything is a fiction, but it gives you a full impression of a real life. Is Metaverse something new? Well, not really. The concept has been there for quite a while. And there were even a couple of implementations of that in two dimensions, of course, such as the famous game of Second Life, for instance, where you could build your own island and your buildings and organize concerts and lectures, sit in a cafe with avatars of other people. Diplo Foundation made the first embassy, the real embassy of Maldives in Second Life. Today we use Facebook, Instagram, all these social media, you just observe the zombies around you that are walking or sitting, but they're actually not there. They're somewhere on the phone in a completely different space. So it's not new. What are the benefits? Well, one obvious benefit is you could meet with people without any risk of spreading COVID-19 disease. You don't need a mask or something. You might need a mask which would protect uh, spreading the, the digital viruses now, but that's a different thing. You could easily travel around the world, maybe meet completely imaginary spaces. Uh, you could show your work, let's say you're a sculpture. You don't have to do a sculpture. You can actually make it in a virtual world and show it. There's a lot of opportunity for innovation, for businesses, for economic growth. It's quite beneficial. What are the risks? Well, the main risk is that things don't really go the way that we hoped for. And we could end up in a matrix. You know the movie? If you haven't watched it, now is your moment. What does that mean? That we end up sitting in a chair, completely cut off the real world, um, mentally immersed in a completely imaginary world, where everything seems so bright and, and, and nice, almost like an Instagram where we are all smiling and beautiful, but the reality behind us is actually much, much worse. So, should we be the optimists or the pessimists? Well, looking at the internet, which was supposed to be one of the greatest inventions of the society ever, and the way we use it today for spreading conspiracy theories, hate speech, violence. It's not that easy to be an optimist. Of course, it's not about technology. It's about society and how we are going to use that technology. So the main question is, what are we going to get out of this technology? And for what price? Do we really need the things that Metaverse will bring? Or is it just innovating for the sake of innovations? And then ultimately, are we going to consume the new technology just as it is served? Or are we going to try to shape it now, the way it should be in future for the sake of society? So the right question is, which pill would you take now? The red one or the blue one?